Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. We are back on the free to play today and we have done another massive achievement, guys, and that is beating another Faction Wars 21. And the faction in, in question is the Orc Script. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit more difficult than I expected, but overall it, it was mostly Artek. Like Artek is such a beast, and if you have Artek and you're struggling to do the Orc Crypt, it's like what what's what's happening? Why? How? <laughs> But at the same time, I'm not going to lie, I did have a reviver that also helped me in there in Old Hermit Yorg. However, I meant I said something wrong in my previous video when I pulled the Old Hermit Yorg, and I was like, you know what? It's the only reviver in the faction apart from Raka. I was so wrong, and you know, you guys told me because there's two more revivers that I missed. One of them is Tagoar, which has an AoE revive, which chill pretty good on a five-ton cooldown. And obviously has some other good stuff in the kit. Increased speed, heals, all the good stuff. Like, maybe Tagore would have been better than old Hermit York. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. Hermit helped me pass it. And then there's another one. But this is one of those that most people hate because she's so bad. And that's Shaman. We get her for free or like used to get her at least for free when you started playing the game. But it's a single target revive on a 5 turn cooldown. That's just too bad. This increased crit rate does not help. Buff removal is not the best. The aura could be interesting, but still. Those are the two. So it's uh, Hermit, Tagwar, Shaman. And then there's obviously Raka Wildlife. I don't think there's anybody else. Again, unless I missed somebody else. There's nothing in the in the rares department. But having uh, Yorg in here, Old Hermit Yorg, definitely helped me. Because this, this revive can come in clutch. Like having any reviver for Faction Wars definitely makes it a little bit easier. And... <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, the thing that was worse on this uh, faction was, was this stage over here. We're going to show you what, what I mean. This is honestly, apart from the Valk ones, I think this is the worst thing in the game. The triple Cetalia wave with the two, uh, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name. But anyway, the triple Cetalias with, uh, oh my God, what's his name? You know what? I have to go to the faction to check. I know he's a high elf, but <clears throat> those Cetalia waves are so annoying because they just do not want to die. Plus having these, uh, what's the name, Thanasils that keep healing, keep putting you to sleep, more uh, removing of buffs here. It was just annoying. And I think I actually spent more time on that than I actually spent on the 21. But even on Faction Wars 21, the waves were pretty easy. As you're going to see, I'm going to play the quick clip, but the waves were pretty easy. And the boss part is a little bit more difficult because it's the one that keeps swapping HP. If you want to know what... Uh, what boss you're facing when you go into the battle stage, so like I am in here in stage 21, go to the battle and then click on the boss guide and it shows you what he does. A we hit with chance to place true fear, steals buffs and then transfers debuffs and then spreads them unless you unless the initial target has high resist, but you cannot control that because it goes at random, then he cannot spread the debuffs. Also, he has this one that keeps swapping the HP of him with a target that has the highest HP usually. And this can be tricky if you don't do enough damage in between these metal with fate, then you're not going to be able to kill it. But enough talking, I'm going to play the run, I'm going to show you what I, what I uh, did, or actually, you know what, let's just have a quick look at it uh, here in the background to see what I have been doing. Because you're going to see that I mostly went on the, on the waves on full auto. It wasn't that difficult because I have Artek in a stun set, I do have Gaelic in a stun set as well, and then I have Yorg. Uh, I have Trombor and I even have Maruka. You know what? The champion that I never thought I would actually use because she's one of the worst epics in the game. She came in clutch for that faction because her kit can be helpful if you time it right. So obviously it was uh, most of the heavy lifting and most of the damage <clears throat> was done by Artek. His HP burns, his activations and all that because I have no other 6 star on the team. The only 6 star was Artek. I had uh, three five stars in Yorg, Maruka, and then Trombor over here. And then my Gaelic was even uh, level 40. That's it. I, I had some other options that I was going to bring. Uh, I could have brought Ultimate Gaelic in here. I could have brought uh, maybe, what's his name, Tolf the name. I was even debating using Tolf at a certain point. But I decided that this, is the right, uh, this was the right team to help me finish it. And now, you know what? At least Maruka, she can be a 5-star chicken. I'm not going to need her anymore. I'm not going to be farming stage 21. I'm going to be doing the factions on stages 20 or even lower because I, I don't care. As long as I 
as long as I farm the stages where I have a chance to get six star glyphs, I'm fine. And that's, I think, from 18 up. So you're going to see. So while you watch this battle, you're going to see uh, the way that I, I do my skills, the way that I do my buffs, my debuffs, everything. I always keep an eye out over here. OK, the first hit is just a we hit. The second one is the one that, as you can see, he transferred all the debuffs, which was only one. And he stole the buffs that I had. And then the other one that you need to keep an eye on is this one over here that he does the health swap. He usually does the health swap when he is around this bar, okay? There's one little trick that you could try to take advantage of if you have more champions built with more damage that but you don't have the reviver. The way that he does the way that he does the swap, the boss does the swap, is like I said, when he is over here. But what I notice sometimes happens is if he is over here. But he has the buff and debuff exchange ready. He's going to do that instead of doing the health swap. So that might be a tip that it could help you guys. It might, it might give an idea or like a way to actually beat this one. Like, for example, like I said, you might not have <clears throat> a reviver, but you might have Rask. Rask is another amazing champion that can keep you healed, can keep you topped up. That can be really good to be used. If not, you might just have to go the way of having regeneration on every single champion in, uh, over here. So as you can see, sometimes I had to stop and think like, what do I use from, from the skills over here? How do I do it? What's the... What's the right moment to heal? Who do I revive? And I always try to keep uh, the revive and the revive on death ready if I have to. So at a certain point, I get a little bit low with everybody on the HP. And that's when I actually use Maruka's revive on death. Because you know what? Uh, Yorg, only uh, my reviver, alternate Yorg, only revives two people. So having Maruka come in with that revive on death was actually clutch. I think this is one of those situations where you can see, like I mentioned, he's going to do the debuff swap instead of the HP swap. See? He had that ready. He was over here, but he did the swap of the of the debuffs first. So if I had the revive over there, maybe I could have beaten it, okay? I decided not to boost because I don't want to kill the boss now, okay? Maybe I could have killed the boss. But I did not want to kill it now because I have two people dead. If I have two people dead, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna three star it. And my whole goal over here was to three star the stage, okay? Because that, that's what I need. I need a 63 stars on orcs so that, that I can move on to the next faction in order to beat it. But that's what I kept doing. I, as you can see, I have a little bit of a heal on uh on Artac. It's because I have him in a stun set plus an immortal. Before that, I swapped a little bit his gear. I put speed gear on him instead of the immortal set for the Cetalia waves because for the stage 20, because that was so annoying. I just could not keep them controlled. And by giving him a little bit of extra speed, plus I rage bought his masteries. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're going to want masteries on our type because he's just an amazing champion. I'm not going to lie. You're definitely going to want those. You saw the revive on that I used here. So yeah, that was that was helpful. That helped me revive at least one of those champions or more in case the boss crit. But yeah, I have Artag, like I said, in a stun plus immortal now because he needs a little bit of healing for himself. Because otherwise, if he does not heal, he just keeps uh he's gonna keep dying and I need to keep reviving him and all that, so that can be a bit more difficult. Also, watch this. That heal from Maruka. It also come in clutch, so I'm not gonna lie, for the sake of faction wars, Maruka can actually be an amazing champion. If you do not have a better option, if you don't have another champion that's gonna help you with that, she's amazing. One extra thing that I could have done, and I missed the opportunity here, that, you know, it might have made it easier for me, I could have given Maruka a little bit more... Uh, accuracy so that when she does her A1 she lands that decrease speed more often because most of the time it got resisted because honestly I did not build her with uh I did not build her with what's it called with uh accuracy I think I had her in a lifesteal something that you can do that can help you in here which I didn't do for for my whole team is you can get people in guardian sets for this faction specifically at least as long as you have Artak in there you can just get everybody else in guardians they're gonna mitigate the some of the damage that you take and at the same time they're gonna heal themselves because guardian what it does is it takes 10 percent of the damage from everybody else but it also heals them by 10 percent every time they get a turn so maybe i could have done that i could have gotten trombor in a region set i could have gotten maruka in a region set because i don't really need the shield set i'm not gonna lie like I keep them controlled pretty well with Artak over there plus the stun set with Gaelic and then I do the damage so that was that was pretty good. As you can see, I'm I'm looking over here the timing looks a little bit scary. 
I had to revive on that one, some of them, not on all. And now this is the tricky part. The boss is going to do the, ex the exchange. And I think I'm not... He kills some of my champions. I heal up the ones that look like they need more HP, okay? So I think over here Gaelic dies. And then there's, there's Yorg that's going to have the... I'm not doing the boost because I don't want the boss to steal the increased attack. My Gaelic dies. Boss takes damage from Brimstone. This is really tricky. It can get really scary. So I do the HP burn. I do the A1 over there. A1 with Baruch, and then I do the revive. I think I don't do the activation, because if I do it, I'm going to kill the boss. I do the revive, and now the boss dies from the HP burn. So you have to be careful and keep that in mind. If you see that the HP is really low, don't do the activation with Gale with uh, Artak if you need to still revive somebody. Wait, do the revive, and then the boss, as you saw, died from the HP burn. Okay, so this, this was stage 21. Let's have a quick look at the builds, as I mentioned. So I had stun set and immortal on Artak. These are his stats. Let me move myself to the other side. These are this is basically the build that I use on him for Doom Tower Waves. He's built for stun set and Doom Tower Waves for me. These are the masses that I chose for him because I have him in stun set. I want fearsome present. If I didn't go stun set, I would have gone maybe on the left hand side and gotten myself War Master for more damage. But for the sake of controlling. Fearsome Presence gives an extra chance to land stuns, and also Harvest of Despair can be good because every time he lands a stun, he can land the leech as well. And also get Master Hexer because I think this one can extend the leeches as well. So you, you get leech, basically more healing back. So yeah, Artek is the only one that's main build. Nobody else here has masteries, just uh, Jorg, Trambor are booked. That's about it. And Trombor is only booked on this one, not fully booked. Then I have Gaelic that's not booked. I have Maruka that is... Actually, I booked Maruka. I forgot about that. So I even booked Maruka. I was desperate because I had her before I had York. So I booked her because I was like, you know what? This heal can help. As you saw, it actually helped a ton. Then the Revive on that came come in clutch, but nobody else has Masteries, okay? So Maruka is in a shield set plus some Perception. You're not going to see crazy stats. Again, you're not going to see crazy stats apart from from Artak, everybody else has just decent normal stats. Old Hermit Kyorg in region plus immortal because he needs to stay alive. He needs to have decent speed and then some survivability stats because he is the one that's supposed to not die and be the reviver for the team. If I would have struggled, maybe I would have taken him to six star, but he did the job at five star. That's pretty good. Again, he's booked. Then I had Trombor, and honestly, he just took some leftover uh, stalwart that I'm not using anymore because I'm using an unkillable team. He used Stalwart plus Immortal. These are his stats. Again, extremely slow. Some survivability. So again, they're not crazy stats. Nobody has crazy stats. The only one, like I said, did the heavy lifting was Artak. And then we have a level 40 Gaelic in a stun set. <laughs> That's all. Stun set and then... I don't know if I can call this survivability. But <laughs> stun set, some speed. I didn't care about any accuracy on him. Again, no books, no masteries. And this was my Faction Wars 21 for Orcs, guys. This can be done, like I said, pretty easily. As long as your Artek is pretty well built, which most of you should build Artek because he's amazing for Spider, he's amazing for Doom Tower, for Hydra, for Ice Golem, you name it, he, he's going to be there. So he's going to be the one that you're going to have to keep him alive, make sure nobody else dies, and you're going to be able to beat this faction. Now, let's talk a little bit quickly about my, uh, my what's it called, my uh, Fusion, because I've... I've I didn't do a video yesterday about it, there was just standard grinding, but one thing that I should have done a video maybe yesterday to mention was the Dungeon Divers that finished today. Well, that Dungeon Divers that finished today was, was on for three hours while the Ice Golem was also live. So what I did is, I just finished off the Ice Golem, I just finished the Dungeon Divers by doing Ice Golem on stage 20, and then I moved on with my day. So currently, I'm doing pretty fine. I have everything collected so far. Summon Rush, I did it, like I said, from, from pulling shards, but I also pulled a ton of mystery shards. Pulled a ton of mystery shards to get this, because I'm hunting for satyrs as I'm trying to beat Skinwalkers, and that's going to be one of the next videos. Hopefully, maybe, I don't know, depending on my luck. So yeah, that's why I got a little bit more points there. Artifact Enhancement, I did some of it. I still need to finish it. This is pretty high. It's pretty high. And with me changing gear, swapping gear around for people to beat Faction Wars definitely does not help me at all. But I don't think I missed anything yet. Then when it comes to tournaments, I already got my Dragon Wands, everything. Champion training, I'm getting close to finishing this. And I might even go all the way because another shot, another epic book can come in handy. Especially because I'm going to need to book maybe more epics for Faction Wars. Classic Arena is already finished for me. And then the next one is Ice Column that, like I said, just started. Well, basically this one, again, I'm going to go to 2750 and then stop. I'm not going to go too crazy on farming Ice Column. I'm going to do the other Dungeon Divers in other ways. But 
I'm not gonna do anything else today. Like, I'm not gonna use extra gems or anything. Even the energy that you saw that I saved in Faction Wars, I'm not gonna collect it today, okay? I'm just gonna collect it tomorrow when it's Dungeon Diver so I can double dip with the Ice Golem. But yeah, this is gonna be it for the video today, guys. That's another one done. Another faction done. I think that's my what? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. That's the sixth faction down. I have another eight to go. My math, no, another six. I have another nine to go. Hopefully, I'm gonna finish this one today. That's what I'm gonna try in RNG. And then we're gonna see which one I'm gonna try and focus next. I think Ogren's gonna be another one that I'm gonna focus next. Then Lizardman. And Dark Elves, honestly, I haven't done much because for Dark Elves, next reset, I'm going next the uh, Hydra reset, I'm going to have Mistral Life Pain. As you see, I'm at 96 frags. So I'm like, you know what? I'm definitely going to build her. I'm going to book her. I'm going to max her out. She's going to carry my Dark Elves faction crypt for sure. But yeah, this is going to be it for the video today, guys. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and we're going to see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.